Tonight, vengeance or justice? That's the question at the heart of tonight's ABC 15 investigation. Three years ago, Phoenix police officer Paul Rutherford died after he ran into traffic without looking. It was a sad and tragic accident, but police and prosecutors aggressively investigated the woman who hit him and charged her with negligent homicide. The court found they hid evidence in her innocence and in a dramatic hearing just last month, a judge tossed those charges for good. ABC 15 Chief Investigator Dave Biscopine broke that story and tonight he's showing us new evidence and testimony that reveals the level of bias and pressure inside this case. Everyone agrees this was an extremely emotional case for Phoenix PD, and how could it not be? But that really became the issue. Could they set aside their emotions and seek justice? Could they investigate the death of one of their own fairly? Well, in the end, the court found they did not, and the Maricopa County Attorney's Office went along with them. From the court's perspective... When the judge made his ruling dismissing the case, Nubia Rodriguez burst into tears and then fell into her defense attorney's arms. And these are her attorneys, Armando Nava and Lawrence Coplo. Were they seeking justice or were they just seeking vengeance? This was vengeance. This is nothing but vengeance. There is no justice to be found here. The whole case began more than three years ago, in March 2019. That's when Officer Paul Rutherford, while responding to a car crash, suddenly ran into the left-hand turn lane without looking. A Phoenix officer tragically died, so in their mind, someone had to pay. I, that's the way it looks to us. I think they made up their mind the day that this occurred. The court and multiple judges found the case was full of problems. Here's just a few. To get the charges in the first place, police and prosecutors presented misleading and false testimony and evidence to a grand jury. They didn't show the grand jury any video, like this one showing Rutherford dart into traffic. They also didn't tell the grand jury that Rutherford failed to look both ways. And during this final hearing to decide whether the case should go forward, one of Phoenix's detectives testified there was internal pressure to keep that critical fact secret. There were nothing directly to my face, but I heard grumblings of why are you putting that in there? And I defended my position. I said, because I believe that needs to be in this report to be fair. This is Detective Gregory Gibbs, a traffic reconstruction expert. In his final report, he wrote, Quote, it needs to be considered that Officer Rutherford could have also avoided the collision if he had stopped and looked west. Who were those rumblings from? Objections as to relevance and beyond the scope of a prelim judge. Overruled. Go ahead. I don't know specifically. That's why I said no, nothing to my face. I, I assumed other detectives or other officers who got wind of that. I mean, what do you think that says about the department that they would be angry at him for telling the truth about what happened? Well, the first thing, upon reflection, it doesn't seem like they buy into our system of justice. That it didn't matter what the facts were, they were going to bend them and shape them any way they wanted to get the result they wanted. And how long were you in patrol? And this is Detective Michael Davidson, another main detective in the case. We're about to show you a text message from him to lead prosecutor Tiffany Brady. This is what Davidson calls one of the defense attorneys and then says, F him. Brady texts back, you really shouldn't hold your feelings in. And when a fact witness starts saying things like that, F them, that is an indication of a motivation and a bias. And the problem that I really have is with the prosecutor's response of essentially going along with the joke. Well, good afternoon, everybody. During a recent press briefing, we asked County Attorney Rachel Mitchell about the case. I, I don't, we looked at what our prosecutors did within this office and we, we scrutinized it be, and we did not find any wrongdoing on their part. Um, I mean, could a prosecutor have responded differently to that? Certainly, but. Uh, Shouldn't they have though? Well, I, I understand the, the comment is, is basically calling that out and saying that's too much. It's probably not the most artful way to say it. No, that's not how I take it. I don't think that that's accurate. Mm, that's uh, how I take it. In the end, Mitchell stands behind the case, even after the court tossed the charges. And at that hearing, the judge apologized to everyone involved. And I wish I wasn't here giving this news to um, his family, um, but I am. And I'm sorry that that's the case. I'm also sorry to the pain that has um, continued for others, including Ms. Rodriguez. But MCAOs created other victims and by how they handled this. Would you agree with that? I think this case is only victims, unfortunately. So yes, it's tragic that we lost Officer Rutherford the way that we did, 
but the Phoenix Police Department's actions, the Maricopa County Attorney's Office's actions afterwards, they victimized Ms. Rodriguez. They put her through a nightmare for the past three years. I'm Investigator Dave Biscobing, ABC 15, Arizona.